The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship on this beautiful, sunny morning in March. I am delighted to be back with you after missing your Wednesday evening service. I had to listen so I knew exactly what you guys got to do without me. You musicians were wonderful. Thank you so much, Kevin and Doug and Lynn for playing. And of course, Jane and Shelley. Our Wednesday evening services are just so beautiful that I was sad to miss it with you guys. I got to join with the good people of First English just down the road, and it was a delight to serve them this week. Um, I don't even know who is here ne this next week. Did anybody look at the bulletin on Wednesday that said who is here? No. No, that's okay. Another pastor will be here with you on Wednesday, fear not. <laughs> Huh? You just know it's not you. Yes, it is not me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Maybe it's a good, it adds a little spice to the worship service, right? You never know what you're going to get. But that's what you get with me too, though, right, Carter? <laughs> Pastor, Judy. Pastor Judy from Erland. She is the interim right now at Erland. So she will be joining you. So thank you for looking that up, Jane. <laughs> I have a few other announcements for you this morning. Our Globe offering will continue to go to the Cannon Falls area food shelf, so please consider making that donation either of food or money to them this month. Um, our Lenten services every week, there is food at 530, so please come and eat. Your committees are hosting you for meals for a free will donation, and it is a great thing to come and sit and have fellowship with one another and then come up for worship together at 6.30. We are looking for a couple more people still to join our bell choir. We had a couple people who had to step back, and so if you are willing to come and learn, please come on Tuesdays at 6. The practice is about an hour, and we would just love to have more people fill in there. I am also looking for two people to help with the funeral next Saturday for Roger Zimmerman. Um, it is in the afternoon. The funeral will start at 3 o'clock. And really, I'm just looking for a couple people who are willing to just be the hosts, to be a welcoming presence here for the family as they come, to have coffee made for them, and just kind of watch the bars that the family will be purchasing and bringing in themselves. And so I'm looking for a couple people who will just make sure that those bars stay full on the table as um, we just share fellowship. So the order of Roger's funeral is going to be um, a, a visitation from 2 to 3. And at 3, the, the service will start. And immediately following the service, we're just going to have about a half hour of fellowship. And then we'll have military honors right after that fellowship and then the family will be going to have a meal together to just honor him. So if you are available and willing, let me know, because I would, I would welcome a couple extra people around here helping that day. Lastly, there will be no Sunday school. Unfortunately, um, Daniel is sick, and so Lindsay is going to play mom this morning, which I am grateful she is able to do that. So there is no Sunday school. Um, we will still look at those students who celebrated their milestone and learned a little bit about money last weekend. So during our children's message, we will spend that time together. I have one more announcement, and our good friends from Fairbo, Renee and Chris, have joined us for worship today. They're gonna to keep my daughters in line in the front while Mitch and Owen are working in the back. So Renee and Chris, thank you for joining us today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. At this time, I invite you to stand and share a sign of God's peace with your neighbor. As you make your way back to your pews, please remain standing. We are going to be singing a new song for our call to worship this morning. 
from All Creation Sings. It is a new hymnal from the ELCA. And so Jane will be playing the whole song through one time so you can kind of hear the melody. It's a quite catchy tune. So, And then the choir will be singing loudly as to lead us all in this beautiful music. so wonderful. Thank you for singing out. Let us join together in our call to worship found on the screens or in your bulletin. I lift my eyes to the hills from where my, my help come. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Everyone who believes in him will not perish, but may have eternal life. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world. My help comes from the Lord, who made the heaven and earth. My help comes from the Lord, who made the heaven and earth but in order that the world might be saved through him. My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. Let us join together in our confession and forgiveness. God of renewal, we confess that we fail to be open to your vision for the world. In our confusion, amid all that is unfinished in our lives, we close ourselves off from where and how your spirit calls. Forgive us and open our hearts and minds so that cross marked and spirit sealed, we may live into a new life you have bestowed upon us for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, has come to us in Jesus, who, his, who by his holy cross has redeemed the world. 
buried with Christ by baptism into death. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Cross marked and spirit sealed. You are raised to new life. Almighty God, strengthen you in faith to live each day renewed in God's call for your life. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, open the eyes of our hearts to the mysteries of your saving love, that we might grasp the hope to which you have called us. Give us a bold understanding of your unfolding vision for us and for your world. Accompany us on our seeking journey and lead us to where you would have us go. In the name of Jesus, amen. I invite you to be seated and I invite all kids to come forward. All right, Grace, why don't you pick one of each of those. Do I have enough? I think I'm one short. No, I have enough. Look at that. Oh, all right. Do you need a Do you need a napkin? No. Okay. Okay. So everybody needs a save, a spend, and a give jar. You can pick those three if you want. You two, you three each pick one of those. You need one of each of those. And actually, Nolan, can I get you a set after worship? Sure. Okay. We'll give it to Christopher. You can just be the knowledge-filled kid today, Nolan. Okay? Okay. So this last week, Lindsay and I had a milestone ministry class for kids downstairs. And we gave three jars. We have one that says give, one that says save, and one that says spend. What do you think we want you to do with those jars? What? Spend, right, spend, save, and give, Nolan. Yes, amen, you got it. Okay, so what we did was we talked about how important it is to be good stewards of what we have. You do get to keep them. And what we want to then again teach you today, for those of you who aren't able to join us, is that with all of the money we get, do any of you get allowances? No? My kids don't get allowance. No? So, okay, so sometimes people get allowances, which is not the case here. What are other ways that you can get money? Grace. Helping somebody, yes? You don't know? When you grow up and get a job. When you grow up and get a job. <laughs> yes. Nolan. Um, birthdays. Birthdays, right? Christmas, sometimes you get money. And the importance of these jars is to remember, when you get money, we need to spend it wisely. Now, how many of you, if you were to get a hundred bucks, would love to just go to the store and buy something? Spend it all. So you spent some of that. I just, spent one bench. just spent a little. Okay, so the point of these jars is to remember that when you get money, you should always think about what you really want to do with it. So we have Give, spend, and save. We should always, what God says, is give some of that money to people who are in need. They, he says to tithe. So we tithe is giving one-tenth of what we have. Yep, you keep the jars. So you take a little bit of your money and you put it in the give jar. You're going to give it to somebody who is in need. And then next, you're going to save. So how many of you have big dreams about like buying something really cool that maybe your parents won't let you buy? My dad would let me buy the, the ultimate Lego set. Okay, the or ultimate the Lego set. Created. Yes, these are amazing, but they're kind of expensive, right? $160. Well, man. 
Okay, so these are things. These are expensive, right? Legos are very important to us, you guys. So what we need to do is when we get some money, we need to put it away and we need to save. We need to save for those really cool things that we want to buy that maybe our parents don't want us to buy yet. But we also need to save for a rainy day. Save for when you get to be an adult, things like the dishwasher breaks or the laundry, the wash machine breaks or your vacuum breaks. You have to pay for things like that. We would save money for that. And then we would spend. There are things that we want to do, right? Like Grace and I, we love to go to the movies. So maybe Grace would have money in her spend for the movies. So the point of these jars, especially parents and guardians who are receiving these jars at home, it is to teach our children that we are to be good stewards, that we should take the gifts that we have received, even though we might have worked really hard for them in jobs, and we, t we need to mindfully save, spend, and give to others. Okay? So let's pray, and then you can go back to your seats and explore the jars when you get home. I will pray you don't have to repeat after me. Generous God, the gifts that we receive are so plentiful in this world. Help us to remember that it is good to give to other people, to help people who are in need. It is good to save for something special that we really would like, and it is good to spend. Help us to learn from a young age to be good stewards of the money that we have. Help us as adults to be re-grounded in this same commitment of giving, saving, and spending. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. If you need help carrying those back, have somebody help you. you want help? No? You got it. They are glass jars, so they will break. And Lindsay made these beautiful jars. So when you see Len Lindsay, tell her good job. Okay, we'll have our first reading. The first reading is from the 12th book of Genesis, starting with the first verse through the fourth verse. The Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had called him, and Lot went with him.
I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel according to John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel? And yet, you do not understand these things. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent into the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Many Americans are bilingual. Not me. But, by that I mean the secular language of sports talk, celebrity gossip, and the teenage language. That's how I thought. Do most of you know what the teenage language is? <laughs> no, I don't either. That's what I thought. So here's a lesson to all of you in speaking teenage whether it's your grandchildren or children or great-grandchildren, are you ready? Slay. It means cool. Bustin'. It means it tastes good. Drip. It means to look good. Fit. Is your outfit, is that your outfit? I think I said that one wrong. Did I say that one wrong? No, she's shaking her hand. She doesn't want me to talk to her about this. So sorry, we're going to move on from fit. Um, Christopher, is he still in here? Christopher, what's sus? He taught us that in our, in our children's lessons a couple weeks ago when I was writing out the words of Christ. Good job, Christopher. And OG means original. There. Now you all are bilingual in the teenage language. 
It won't stump you anymore when you're in conversation with teenagers, right? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> it still will stump you. The teenage language is not the only language that stumps us in society. The language of religion is also a really hard one. When we encounter someone who is fluent in their religious language, it can be intimidating, and sometimes it's debilitating, even for the most seasoned person of faith. We become reserved. We forget how to articulate or describe our faith, because let's face it, talking about our faith can be hard. Trendy words, catchy phrases, and theological terms can be overwhelming. And for some of us, engaging with people who speak confidently about their own faith disengages us in conversation. So I lived on the same street my entire childhood. It was a fun neighborhood full of kids my age. On the street live a girl, lived a girl who we are going to just call Megan today. Megan and her family went to Sunday school in confirmation with me. And when high school came around, she started going to a different church. She went with her friend group, and that's why she went to the other church. We remained friends all through high school, and then as grown-ups happen, as a, t as a time comes when you grow up and move away from school and go to, co or move away from home and go to college, Eventually, both of our parents moved off the street, and we just disconnected. But recently, we reconnected. And when we did, we had a blast sharing stories from our childhood and reminiscing about the days on Westwood Drive. And then we got talking about our faith. Something I never knew about her family is how her choice to go to a different church with her friends played into the dynamics of her household. Her parents were lifelong Lutherans in the ELCA. And the church she chose to go to in high school, simply because her friends went, was not an ELCA church. But eventually, Megan got married and had kids, and now she raises her children in an ELCA church. But during those high school years, when she was attending somewhere else, there was a lot of tension in their house that Megan didn't understand. Come to find out, Megan's parents were terrified that this other church was teaching what Megan was being taught in this other church because of the language that they used when they were talking about their faith. It was different than what they understood. This church was using language like, have you been saved? Have you chosen Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And have you let Jesus into your heart? Megan also found out years later that her parents were worried about the assumed judgment that this other religion had for them regarding their faith because of this language barrier. Basically, her parents were not bilingual in this faith. In John's Gospel today, Nicodemus went to Jesus, and it might have been in the dark of night, but he still went. Nicodemus went to have a come to Jesus moment about the faith that he didn't understand that Jesus was teaching. As I see it, two people sat together, Nicodemus, a leader in his own community, Jesus in his, and they sat at a table together and they shared stories of faith. Nicodemus trying to understand something that he didn't. Jesus spoke to this outsider of his faith in a way that encouraged more questions from Nicodemus. 
Nicodemus started with honoring that he knew Jesus was a teacher and that they called him rabbi, even though those who he ran with disregarded Jesus as a teacher. There was a dialogue back and forth when Nicodemus asked what it meant to be born again. And Jesus' clarification, he described what it was to be born of water and spirit, not the literal sense of what it means to be born from your mother's womb. I believe that Jesus didn't meet Nicodemus with a spiritual status of superiority, but with an invitation to a new understanding of faith. Eventually, Jesus does seem a bit annoyed with the prodding of the questions and says to him, Aren't you a teacher as well? Open your heart. You know these teachings of God, and you know that a Messiah is supposed to be born, the Son of Man, lifted up so that whoever believes in him can have eternal life. I imagine Jesus talking to Nicodemus and taking his cheeks by his hands and saying to him with a squished face and all, Nicodemus, God loved the world so much that he gave you me so that whoever believes in me will not die, but he will have eternal life. Believe what is happening around you. I am here so that the world might be saved. I believe Jesus was trying to teach Nicodemus so his eyes could be opened beyond what he already knew about his religion from his teachings of God. So that he might be bilingual in a new language of who God is in this world. If Megan and her parents would have sat in conversation and question and dialogue, maybe they could have gotten over some of this tension sooner. Maybe her parents would have helped her understand her own faith in words that she could respond with when the community of faith she was meeting with asked her questions. Or maybe her parents would have heard that she was just going where her friends were going, that she still held her understanding of faith in religion that she affirmed. So dear friends, for the sake of being bilingual in a world with multiple religions, listen to these words. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, as Lutherans who sit with me now. Why, yes, I most certainly have. When I was confirmed, I affirmed my faith that God is the God that created me. I believe that Jesus redeems me and that the Spirit will guide my life. I accept this faith that I believe in, and Jesus Christ is most certainly a part of that faith. He is the one who died for my sins, and yes, he has saved me. Well, are you born again? Yes! Yes, Yes, you most certainly are, each and every single day. Every day, when I wash my hands, when I wash my body, I am reminded that the waters claimed me in my baptism, and I am a child of God. And through that waters, then and now, I am made clean of the sins of this world, and I am born again to new life each and every day. And I am blessed to be born again today. And probably the most difficult one. What about the rapture and being left behind? Well, I am grounded 
in the fact that Christ died. And because he did, I will inherit eternal life. There is nothing, nothing that I can say or do that will separate me from the love that Christ has for me. He was crucified on the cross. He died and he rose from the dead and I will not be left behind. I stand firm on the knowledge that the kingdom of God is for me too. So now, dear friends, hear this. I too don't also get my bilingual language of religion right. When I encounter somebody who believes differently than I do, even is a pastor, I get it wrong. Most of the time, when I encounter somebody who is convicted in their faith and who quotes scripture at me and who has accused me of not knowing enough about my faith, about how I have turned away from the Bible and about how I am not living right with Christ. I don't always get my responses right, and you won't either. So today, I want to equip you with something more. I want to share something that I firmly believe in. Our religious differences are not meant to be brick walls in this world. This thing, this wall that cannot be permeated, this concrete barrier that divides us, that separates us from each other, it's not meant to be our religious differences. For hundreds of years, religious leaders and followers have been trying to navigate what God's intention is for us. And time and time again, we ourselves build man-made walls between religions. We fight over who has interpreted the faith right and who has interpreted it wrong. After intense debates about religion, we quit talking to one another about our differing beliefs. And it has become more and more difficult to enter into civil conversations with each other. So whether you have to go in the dark of night like Nicodemus did to talk to someone, or you need to go like the Apostle Paul, loud and proud and build churches, I encourage you to go. And when you do, fall back on your understanding that God's love is for all people. Be encouraged by the grace that is given freely from above when you get the language wrong. And go empowered with the vision that this place has set for our standards as people of God. To be a welcoming church and people focused on Christ, who together actively reach out to their community to proclaim God's love and salvation for everyone through Jesus Christ. Amen. You will notice, I'm going to shift here for a minute, you will notice that your bulletins are different this week. So Kim has been sick, so you are stuck with the Pastor Kira's version of everything today. So, the words are not printed in your bulletin. They are printed on the screens, and hopefully I got those right too, but I can't guarantee it because it was the first time I did it. So, feel free to open up your hymnal, your ELW, to um, number 323, God Loved the World. And we are going to be singing verses 1, 2, and 3, which should be the correct verses I printed on the screens. Please stand as you are able.
As people of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. As I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayers. Good and gracious God, as we consider what it means to speak our faith into this world, help us to be grounded in our lessons of grace and love for all of creation. Help us to see that it is okay to sit in dialogue, in conversation with somebody who thinks differently than we do, that it is important to go out on a limb and share our faith with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, you breathed life into creation at the beginning and are still here with us with the breath of the Holy Spirit at work. We are thankful for your creation in the hills, in the valleys, in the mountains, in the lakes, in the snow, and in the rain. Help us to speak encounters of divine into this world so that others have the opportunity to know your presence here and now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you surround all people with love and care, whatever they are going through. Today, especially, we pray for Richard and Jan, Teresa and Linda, Shauna, Mary, Lorraine, Eva Marie, Floyd and Para Lee, Bruce and Nancy, and Lawrence. Lord, we pray for those who mourn the death of Roger Zimmerman. As we commend his body to eternal rest this week, hold them in their grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all these prayers we offer you today, trusting that you hear us when we speak and when we are silent. Bless these prayers. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please join with me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. People of God, people of life, we gather as a holy communion for the meal that has been shared countless times, in countless places, and in countless ways. The first time this meal was shared, Jesus was gathered around the table with a ragged collection of people, the outcasts, the betrayers, the power-hungry, the fragile, the lonely, and the lost. For the first time this meal was celebrated, Jesus promised that it was for all time, that whoever came together, whoever broke the bread together, and for whoever the wine was poured out, and wherever this story was told, that he would be there. So today, we remember the story as it has been told thousands of times. We eat the bread, we drink the wine, and we affirm that we belong at this table and that Jesus is here. So together, I invite you to join with me with the words that are on your screen or in your bulletin. So if we come to this table angry, let this bread and wine be our peace. If we come to this table broken, let this bread and wine be our grace. If we come to this table betrayed, let this bread and wine be our wholeness. If we come to the table in despair, let this bread and wine be our life. For this is a holy table 
with food to fill the hungry world and wine to quench the thirsty hearts. Thanks be to God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave it to all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Today we will be collecting our morning offering as you come forward for communion, so please bring it forward and set it in the offering plates as you come. We also have the option for gluten-free wafers. Just ask your server for one if you need one. And we have non-alcoholic grape juice on the center of the plate, so grab that if you so wish. Christ is the host of this table, and all are welcome. I invite the ushers and communion servers to come forward.
please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you always. Amen. Let us pray the prayer for offering and communion together. Holy One, we thank you for the grace that comes from this table so freely. We lift these offerings to you in thanksgiving for all your work of mercy. Through the table and these offerings, shape us as people of your justice and freedom in our world. Amen. I invite you to receive this Lenten benediction. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. We sing Lift High the Cross, found on page 660 in your hymnals or on the screen, and I believe it is verses 1, 2, and 3. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.